You know that scene in Jurassic Park where, <laughs> where they're in the Jeep and the, the woman's head gets turned uh, and they stand up and they look because they see the dinosaurs for the first time. That's what this video is like because we're looking at the giants on a rugby pitch, the tight head props. This is my player power rankings at, at the end of the year, bringing the year to a close and post World Cup ranking the top 10 players in every position. I've already done hookers and loose head props, so if you've missed those, they're in the channel right now. Another reason why you should hit subscribe on the channel, because then you won't miss any of them. And you can give the video a thumbs up and leave your comments as well. How do you think uh, I have got on compiling my top 10? There have been some changes. There's a few players that have dropped out of the top 10. There are new entries into the top 10. And there is a change at the top from the last time I did this, back in the summer. So... At number 10, Thomas Francis, a new entry into the top 10. I think this is a guy, he's one of the most improved inter international rugby players that there is. Sorry, I thought the sound wasn't working for a second. We're all good. Um, Thomas Francis has, when he started, he was he was kind of a, well, he still is a big lump. Six foot one, 135 kgs, a big, big man. And there's a theme through this video, as I've already mentioned, giant human beings. Uh, but he was kind of scrummage first and everything else was a bonus. He has evolved his game massively. And the story of Thomas Francis, as he sits here, he's getting on for 80 caps for Wales. He started at Doncaster Knights, which is in the second tier of English rugby. He would have been playing to, you know, hundreds of people. Now he's playing to tens of thousands of people in the biggest stadiums. And he had a great World Cup. And when I look at the problems that England have in their tight head prop position, I am gutted that England didn't pick this guy when we had the chance because he was born and raised in England, played at Doncaster, then Exeter, but he qualifies for Wales and fair play Wales. You've got a gem there. Number 10. Uh, number nine, Luke Taggy from Fiji. Another great story. So it was only, what, five years ago and Luke Taggy was playing third division rugby in Fiji for an amateur club. And here he is on the world stage coming off the back of an amazing Rugby World Cup for him. All action. He does the basics and he's really helped evolve Fiji's set piece, but he does so much work around the park, a destructive ball carrier. And he's another new entry into the top 10 and deservedly so. Only 26 years of age, he is the youngest of the tight head props in the top 10. So he's got a, a big career ahead of him. He's just moved to Bayonne in France. In fact, he's actually replacing, uh, sorry, he's moved to Provence in France because he is replacing Thomas Francis number 10, who's just moved on to buy on. But uh, Luke Tangy is ahead of Thomas Francis in this list. 130 kegs of a, of a Fijian who's had a great, great year. Number eight, Trevor Niakane. He's down one spot from the last time. 34 years young, two-time Rugby World Cup winner. This time got to take the field at the, in the Rugby World Cup final. Of course, he was injured four years ago during the pool stages. One of the biggest smiles in world rugby and he absolutely loved being out there on the field. Uh, against New Zealand to bring him home uh, and the fact he can play both sides of the scrum such a valuable asset and with the way that um, conditioning is these days he's 34 now is it the end of his career he probably will argue he's got a couple of years left in him play applying his trade at Racing 92 another theme as well as the theme of giant men uh, there's another theme that a lot of players in fact I think all but one of the players on this list play their club rugby in France the toughest place to do your job as a scrummager. At number seven, uh, down a couple of spots for Baker Gigashvili, the Georgian tighthead prop, plays for too long in France, 31 years of age. The guy can deadlift for days. He's an unbelievable physical specimen. He was in a Georgian team which didn't quite perform as they would have liked and that didn't give him the opportunity to show what he's about. They would have been targeting a quarter quarterfinal. We'll be disappointed they didn't. Baker Gigashvili, number seven. At uh, number six, Another two-time Rugby World Cup winner, second entry for South Africa, Vincent Koch, 33 years of age now. Another one playing in France, Stade Francais. Absolutely demolished England during the closing stages of that semi-final. And Oxenche gets the headlines, and rightly so, for being an incredible scrummager off the bench. Vincent Koch was fantastic. He was unable to play in the World Cup final because he missed training on the Monday, and that's the South African rule. Don't train Monday, can't play Saturday. It's just the rule. So Vincent Koch will be disappointed he didn't play in a World Cup final, but he's got another winner's medal round his neck and is a proper player in exactly the same position as he was last time at number six. Down, however, two spots 
for the number five Tyg Furlong. Now, rugby world, uh, world Rugby had Tyg Furlong in their team of the year for 2023. Um, I've got him at number five in my ranking of the tight head props. So, um, you know, you can decide whether I've got it more right or World Rugby. And you can leave your comments in, in whatever you think. An absolutely fantastic player. Are his powers fading? Oh, I, I don't think they are because Tyg Furlong's 31 and that's, as we'll discuss in a minute, that's kind of prime age for a tight head prop. So I think Ty Furlong's got a good few years of at the very top level ahead of him. He has had some injuries. He hasn't quite been at the level that he was a few years ago when, when you think about the image of, of him lifting up that <laughs> New Zealand player when he was running with the ball. He was a bull. Well, they, they call him the Wexford bull. And he has been the best tight head prop on earth only a few years ago. He's not there but he's still very, very good. And I think he could get back there as well. Um, I'm sure he'll want to... Well, not that this is going to be his motivation. Oh, I'm, I want to win the Six Nations because Tim put me at number five in the in the tight end prop list. He's a proper player. And I imagine, I could well see him going back up the list again in the year ahead. But for now, number five. At uh, number four, Terrell Lomax, a youngster by tight head prop standards at 27 years of age. Uh, Ty Furlong and Tyrell Lomax, actually, sorry. They're, they're the two that do not play in France. The rest of the players play in France. Terrell Lomax obviously plays uh, in New Zealand. Ty Furlong plays in Ireland where they have to to represent their national team. But it's been five years since Terrell Lomax's debut. Since then, he has firmly established himself as the best tight end prop in New Zealand and one of the best in the world. He was great in the World Cup. The World Cup final, he really held his own against the best scrummaging team on earth. And he's a modern day athlete with it. Six foot four, 130 kgs, and the guy can shift. He, I could well see, being number one in the next couple of years. I, I did say before the World Cup, I was expecting to see a changing of the guard and I thought De Groot and Lomax may take over from Kitsoff and Malerba um, during the World Cup. That hasn't quite happened yet. I could see it happening in the next couple of years, however. Terrell Lomax, love that guy. Ben Tamifuna at number three, Big Ben. What an absolute talisman. Uh, and rocketed up the list to number three, deservedly so. Amazing for Tonga. Two Man of the Match awards in four pool games and one of the best performers in any position at the Rugby World Cup. 150 kegs, a giant fumbus of a man, plays for Bordeaux, proper player. And do you know what? For a guy that's 150 kilos, he put in some performances of like 70, 75 minutes. The guy has got some staying power a proper engine on him, and yes, he's a giant man who can do the basics very well as well. A deserved number three in my book. Now, I said there was a change at the top. Let me remind you, last time it was uh, Owini Antonio number one and Franz Malerba at number two. Owini Antonio is at number two in my list right now. I'm delighted that Fabian Galtier has persuaded Owini Antonio to delay his retirement from international rugby, which he announced just immediately after the World Cup. I can imagine it must have been a really hard one to take if you're a Frenchman. He might, he might be thinking he won't make the next World Cup and home World Cup, all that pressure, all that, all that focus that they put on it and the disappointment must have been really, really hard um, for guys, especially like Awini Antonio, who might think he won't make the next World Cup. Um, I'm glad he's not hanging up his boots at international level yet because he is a proper player. What a player. Six foot five. He was a second row a few years ago for La Rochelle. 150 kegs. His story's amazing as well. 33 years of age now and towards the end of his career. But he was New Zealand born, Samoan parents. And he was travelling as part of like an acting group with his brothers. Um, and he was spotted in France. I mean, he's 150 kgs and six foot five. Not, not hard to spot. And here he is, a two-time European champion with La Rochelle, Grand Slam winner with France, and one of the most fearsome rugby players, let alone tight head props, on earth. Uh, he is number two, meaning the number one is, once again, Franz Malerba. Back on top of this list and of the world. The World Cup winner for a second time, 10 years of Springbok now, and nobody has matched him in green during that time. 32 years of age. He could well have another World Cup in him, I would I would argue. There's quite a lot of players that are around that 31, 32 age for South Africa. And they showed in the World Cup just gone that you can you can have a few of those in your team with Dwayne Vermeulen and with um, Dion Ferry. 
There's not many of them you can take in a squad, however. So, Etzebeth, Detoy, Mullerba, they could probably manage those. Will they all get there? We'll see on that one, but celebrate the guy for what he's already achieved. He, just, just te as a technician of scrummaging, he's incredible. The fact he's a giant man helps, uh, but he can shift as well. And I think he's at the lighter end. He sort of has fluctuated over the years between like 125 and 140 kg. I think he's towards the lighter end now and, and it shows because he can go deep into games as well. And um, yeah, absolutely cracking player. Some of the players that were left out of the top 10, by the way, um, Xander Fagerson dropped out. Taniel Tupo dropped out. I'd be looking for him to get back in because well, it's just injuries. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of him. Dorian Aldegheri for France. Fin Finley Bielan, Fletcher Newell, all fantastic players. Uh, but have dropped out. Let's take a look at the. Oh, let's take a look at the the top ten. Sorry, um, overall, there it is. Franz Malerba on top, tra trading places with Awini Antonio, Ben Tamafuna rocketing up, Tyrell Lomax above Tyg Furlong, and uh, that's a. It's just giant guys, isn't it? Absolutely enormous, and the average age of these players is interesting. It's thirty one, so. I would guess, it would be my guess, this, this will be the oldest average age of any position on the field, which says to me, like I say, a lot of these guys have got years to go yet. Sadly for me, um, not an Englishman in sight. That is a big concern. Well, unless you count Thomas Francis, who's technically English, but plays for Wales. Um, that is a big concern because there's no getting around it. And the two prop positions, um, with Ox and Che being number one for Lucid, Franz Malherbe, being number one at tight head prop, there's no getting around the fact, and I love the fact, that the scrum is still absolutely massive in the game of rugby, and the team with the two best players in those positions, lo and behold, are the world champions the last two times. Uh, I think you can definitely draw a correlation between those two things. Tell me what you think about the top 10, about any players I might have missed, the order that I've got them in. There was a lot of people saying Malcolm Marks should have been the number one in the last video. I love the fact we can... We can have different opinions and get passionate about them in the comments. Do so below. Give the video a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you on the next video.